Hi, I'm Pete, and this is the assembly video for the edge turning rhombic triacontahedron. This is the long promised update for this great puzzle. So, I wanted to show the puzzle after it's been assembled and um, broken in, and it's really ready to be stickered now. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's turning uh, reasonably well. Um, there's still a little bit of breaking in to do, but uh, once I start uh, actually uh, playing with the puzzle and looking at algorithms and, and actually solving it, um, you know, the rest of the break-in will happen. Uh, but it's it's certainly ready to go right now. So this is uh, this is what you get. This is the uh, final product. Uh, I haven't put stickers on it uh, yet, but that's uh, that's going to be next. So uh, I'm going to uh, get started here straight away, and. Um, uh, I'll just show you the tools I'm using. Of course, I have just a, uh, a screwdriver with changeable bits. Um, also, um, I have a flatbed, tiny flatbed screwdriver, which I really use as a prying device. And then, every once in a while, I find that actually these are uh, very, very fine tweezers, and um, they're they're actually for beadwork. I got them at a dollar store, and I find these kind of uh, useful, not to grip things so much as to as to push. So, uh, so this is the uh, uh, the core, and uh, I've sorted the pieces um, just into categories: uh, larger pieces, and then uh, medium-sized pieces, which are the uh, just these little uh, uh, leaves here. Leaves? No, <laughs> I went to grab one of those leaves. Um, little leaf-shaped pieces, and these little uh, crescent-shaped uh, pieces. So that's uh, that, and then uh, I separated out the uh, um, these uh, pentagonal pieces, the caps, and the uh, the bases, because we'll be using these uh, straight away. And uh, then the smallest pieces, which are the five little tiny face pieces. There's five of them per face, and it's it's these little uh, um, speed like uh, very very tiny pieces. And then these little uh, the diamond-shaped uh, face pieces as well. So those are in a separate uh, bin. And I'm actually just going to put the cover on here because if they spill, if they spill, it uh, it can make uh, it be very hard to find them. Now uh, that's uh, something I should mention. I have way more pieces than what you'll get if you just ordered part one and part two of this puzzle. Um, at least as at the time of this video, um, what you order when you get or what you get when you order part one and part two is um, it just exactly enough pieces to make the puzzle. I went ahead, because I had some difficulties and I actually broke a piece, my fault, I went ahead and ordered another part two, which is about 30% of the face pieces uh, on the puzzle. And that gave me lots of spare pieces. And that made me feel a lot better because then I wasn't worried so much about losing these tiny little pieces or breaking something. Um, so uh, now, um, of course we're using cap screws and we're using these little M2 screws as well and I I think I, I gave the details on those in my other video. Alright, well uh, it's time to get started here. Now this puzzle does have a reputation um, for, um, for being very hard to assemble. Um, it, it is tricky. I think, uh, you know, one of my goals in making this video is to kind of show people because so, you know, if you're thinking about getting this puzzle, um, you can go ahead and get it and, and not worry about assembly because it is possible. It, it's a lot of work. There's no denying that, but uh, it's it's well worth it. it is, this is just a wonderful puzzle. Um, it, uh, I've had a chance now to play with mine unstickered for a little while, and uh, it's just it's going to be great. Um, I, um, I decided to uh, reassemble it. Uh, before I, um, I did the stickering, uh, just to overcome some some issues that I, I had experienced and more or less corrected, but I just um, I want to have it perfect is basically how it uh, comes along, you know how it came to this stage. It also gave me a chance to uh, re dye the pieces. I wasn't happy with the uh, with the original dye, so uh, a lot of uh, a lot of reasons to uh, reassemble it. And the benefit is that I can then show. Uh, this uh, this assembly. Um, I did make an assembly video the first time, but it just it really just didn't didn't turn out. 
So, okay, I'm just uh, gathering up the uh, 12 little M, um, M2 screws that, that we uh, start on. So um, the core, you'll notice there are clusters of three all around this. That's where your edges go. And, um, and the edges, they all, um, you'll notice that, that there's this uh, kind of looks like a vertex. And you'll notice there are five of these edges that, that uh, cluster around this vertex. So that what we're going to do is we're going to put this vertex in first. And um, so you'll need one of these. And then you'll put it um, face up where the, the larger hole is uh, pointing up. So, and then uh, this is where you get your M2 screw. Okay. Now, um, these, um, so there are 12 of these. Now, these pieces don't actually turn um, once the puzzle is assembled, but they have to be able to turn while we're assembling it. Because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put them in, and then we're going to let... Um, uh, then we're going to let the edge pieces kind of decide exactly uh, how this piece is oriented. But I think it sh they should be down so that they don't go, there's no wiggle room up or down, um, but so that it can turn. Now it can turn as stiffly as you want. It, it actually should be hard to turn, but uh, but you don't have to like reef it down. Just, just um, turn it down until uh, the screw stops turning. Maybe another eighth or quarter turn past that so that the... the it doesn't move up and down and this is really important and this and, and the other screws um, which I'm going to uh, show really is what uh, oops, what my difficulty was when I first assembled the puzzle I didn't tension the screws um, consistently and it caused problems for the assembled puzzle so uh, that's why I'm <laughs> one of the reasons why I'm redoing this so I'm just going to go around and put all 12 of these in Okay, so the 12 vertices are on now. And uh, it, we actually do need to put the caps on, otherwise uh, um, the uh, as, as we put the edges on, it, it'll be very hard to put the caps on. So these don't have to be glued down in any way. They'll be held down by the edges. So the best way to do it is just to put them on as we put the edges in and as we build up the edges. Okay, so, but now that we have all of those on there, and so they'll turn a bit. They might be very stiff to turn, which is fine. We don't care, but we want them to be, have no vertical movement whatsoever. If there's any vertical movement, we don't want that. So with that, I can change my bit, and I can change it to uh, the one for the cap screws. And we'll do, we'll do the edges now. So I can put these aside for now. Well, I'll remember the caps, but uh, uh, we'll just put them put them aside. And now it's time to put a, put the uh, edges in. Well, so these are the these are the edges. Whoa! My table might be tilted a little bit. All right. Um, yeah, this seems to be uh, this seems to be good. So um, the edges then they'll they'll just kind of they just kind of fit in like this. Now I will uh, point out something. So this is the edge that we're using, and uh, and the uh, and the cap screw has a fairly thick top to it. So if we just Try if we put the the edge in in the core and it's sitting there, and then we try and uh, put the cap screw straight on. You can see that it'll scrape the uh, sort of scrapes one part of this edge here. puts a lot of stress on it. Sort of bends it out of the way at this narrow uh, neck here, and it's just not very good for it. So we're going to do a two-step process of putting this on. Um, you can just kind of um, leave this edge kind of flop into the side. Put the screw in a few turns, but don't tighten it down and uh, to make contact. Just a few turns. Then, then you kind of pull um, 
pull this up and over and then you continue tightening it down okay so that's the way I do it it's uh you know it's a little, little more work but it'll it'll save the save the pieces from damage okay so I'm just gonna gonna do a few turns just enough to get the screw in and started then I'm gonna pull pull the edge up and now I notice I have the edge turned away from the um, the vertex that's what we want so now that this the head of the screw is, is safely underneath the edge and then we can just screw it in okay and now uh, the moment of truth here because this is where um, things uh, didn't go well for me when I assembled this the first time um, I, I tightened quite a few of them down all the way these edges and then I and then I sort of looked at the at this um, the way it, it, it attaches which is kind of the this uh, little lip on the uh, on the edge goes underneath this um, this vertex piece here it's kind of an anchor and I looked at that and I said well this is this is being held down so it doesn't really matter how tight I make that and so then I stopped uh, tightening them down and it turns out that was a mistake and in fact there's there was a distinct difference you know half my puzzle worked great and then half of it the pieces were falling out and it's because um, there's play here um, see there's a lot of play at this end and you see and the way this works there are, there are three pieces and a cap and then all of these pieces are putting pressure on the center and then they're also putting pressure on the face pieces on the uh, pieces um, beside the these little five little face pieces which are sitting there so if these aren't anchored down as tight as they'll go um, it's just a, a very subtle there's just a small extra little bit of play that's introduced in there and it basically is enough to uh, make uh, between these ones and those ones it's enough to make the face pieces fall so that's uh, a very long way of saying that that I believe that these should be tightened until they stop and then maybe just a little a little hair so basically the the piece should be able to rotate but not freely and it should have no up and down play whatsoever so not super tight it, it still rotates but it doesn't have to be um, that's it as long as it rotates it's fine okay. and um, so now that that first piece is on there what we're gonna do I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these in all all around here um, to, uh, to help set that uh, we're gonna put all the edges in first before we do any of the other small parts so I've just put a cap on there and now I'm gonna swing that in and it looks good what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another edge over here and it'll it'll help to set the rotation of this of this right here um, once all of the uh, these pieces get in then this piece will be sort of oriented properly all right Okay. Now, remembering that we can't just plunk it in there uh, because then the cap screw uh, will have that uh, difficulty. So we have to uh, always remember put the screw in. Now, you might have different types of screws, so you might be able to get away with it. But um, I got these from an online hobby shop. They're in parts for model airplanes or model cars or something. And you just go into their parts and uh, you can find... Um, pretty much any <laughs> any measurement of screw that you want, like a M3, any length. So there, there we go. So now I got that all nicely lined up, and now I can I can there. Okay, so now it's stopped, and it still it still moves, 
you know it's, it's not it's not real real free but it'll break in uh, but there's there's no play whatsoever and that is what's important is basically we want to pull all those parts in as tight to the puzzle as possible to make the surface area as tight as possible um, so that there'll be as much shut tension on the face pieces as, as possible to keep them in there okay I had n I've had no problems once I once I started uh, adjusting them that way Sort of tempting to use an electric screwdriver on these. I don't have one, but it might be a little tempting. But on the other hand, you know, maybe you just want to be able to to feel when it stops, not over torque it. Okay. Now, when I first assembled this, I put all sorts of silicone lube on here. Um, I've decided that that's not really a good good thing at all. Okay, so now it it turns, it's stiff, it's turning quite stiffly, but that's okay, right? We, we actually want it to turn stiffly. It'll break in a little bit. There we go. As long as it turns, that's fine. And as long as it turns um, freely. Okay, that one, yeah, I think it's all right. I could, I could back off just a little bit, but I don't, you know, I, I just, I would rather, it'll, it'll break in. So that's the assembly process for the edges, really. I've, I've shown you everything. Um, basically just uh, put in five edges uh, around the vertex and uh, just, uh, just repeat. Okay, so just, just until it catches, then, then pull it up above the cap so it doesn't uh, hurt anything on the back of that edge piece then just turn this down um, yeah I, you know the idea I you know at one point I thought I could put a little lube in there or whatever but really Shapeways material is inherently slippery when you know Shapeways rubs against Shapeways and the pieces break each other in Okay, so I just, uh, I tighten it until it stopped, but I, I back, and then it wouldn't move. So I backed off until I can just, just turn. And that's all I care about. Because once I get everything assembled, I can put quite a bit of torque on that, and I can turn it. And I don't want the pieces just suddenly turning on me, especially when I'm assembling it. But even as I'm trying to solve it, or, you know, I don't want the, the centers to be really super loose. And I don't think... That it's possible on this puzzle and that was that was my mistake you know i wanted the the centers to be more like a three by three rather than uh you know like a speed cube or something all right So you see, see if I if I wasn't being concerned about the back here, if I turn that around, then it would seem to be quite quite solid. It seemed to be quite solid, but of course what I'm what I'm missing is is this this amount of space, and you see there's there's quite a bit of play there, right? And so that, and then and then this one and this one that makes for a tremendous amount of play in this middle piece and then um, in the amount of uh, pressure applied to the other pieces. Okay, so I just turned it until it stopped. Now it's, it's quite tight, but I think that's okay. So there you go. So there is your one uh, vertex with your five pieces. And because now they're, these pieces are pressing on this vertex and it just, it, um, positions it and there's no no risk of this falling out I can't imagine it falling out at all okay once it's all built up there's there's a lot going on okay so these these edges all move quite nicely um, but they just they don't have any play 
in the back here whatsoever. So that's it. I'm going to continue doing that all around the puzzle. And so then when we come back, um, then we will uh, put in, uh, there's not that many more pieces after that. There's the, uh, the little, um, uh, these uh, large leaves, leaves that go, go in the gaps here. And then we'll be putting in the tiny little pieces and that's the time consuming part. But I have a pretty, what I think is a pretty efficient method for it. And I'll go through that and then we'll have this puzzle put together. Just making sure that this this edge is or this vertex is okay. Okay, that's, that's all rough on both ends, but I think it'll be I think it'll it'll work its way through. Okay, I'm pleased with that. Alright, well that's uh that's that one. So uh, we have all of the edges put in now, and the small vertices, the 12 small vertices are all in. We still have another 20 of the large vertices to put in. And then we have uh, the 20 faces uh, to put in. Now the faces are, uh, it, it may start to become clear now. You put the, uh, the large uh, kind of speed like uh, pieces on either side, and then you have to put the five small pieces um, right in in the middle there and this is what what is really uh, can be a little challenging but basically there there's a hole right there's a very deep hole there in in the puzzle so trying to assemble all those pieces over that hole is, is a, really quite challenging so I've come up with an alternate method and that's what I'm going to demonstrate here just getting my uh, pieces all out here I uh, obviously um, put lids on everything. Uh, I don't have uh, kids or pets running around my place, but uh, I do have a spouse and uh, uh, and uh, myself uh, roaming around, and so I, I cover everything up uh, just in case somebody knocks uh, knocks it. Now, when you right now the puzzle is very stable, um, but uh, when um, you start putting these pieces in until you get the last one in. Uh, it could really it's very very fragile and, and you won't really be able to move it very much so I would find the very quiet spot um, where uh, it's not going to get bumped or knocked or anything like that um, I have thought of uh, ideas of, of helping to keep the pieces in while we're putting the rest of the pieces in the first pieces um, you know painters tape it really just doesn't stick well to to uh, shape ways material masking tape uh, you know, some, sometimes it'll stick, sometimes it leaves a very, very nasty residue on the pieces. Keep in mind, we're going to have to uh, sticker these pieces, and some of them are very, very small. So uh, we want to make sure there's, there's no contamination, or as little as possible on the surface. So um, I'm a big fan of using things like that if uh, they work, but in this case, I've tried a bunch of things. I didn't find anything that would work, so other than just uh, being patient, putting everything in very carefully, and just slowly building it up. So, uh, so here's how it works. Um, I'm gonna need, we need three of these for every. Uh, these are the uh, 
these crescent shaped pieces. Uh, these are the uh, big vertices and, and we have 20 of those. Um, so they, they go sort of in, uh, oops, sorry, they, they sort of go in here and actually they go with the points uh, in line with the edges. It's a very nice look um, when we're when we're done and then the three crescents. So we're building three faces at a time um, and I'll just, that's what I'll do, I'll basically build three faces at a time and then we'll go on. Um, once we get started, it, <clears throat> yeah, you gotta be careful as you're turning stuff as you go because it, if you turn the wrong thing, the pieces just plunk in. So uh, assembling the little face pieces, the five little face pieces is, is really, it's not, you know, it, you know, you, you hear the horror stories about it, it's challenging, it's not impossible. Um, I've done it hundreds of times. <laughs> Um, and the idea then is just to um, here are the here are the tiny little pieces that we put in. Now um, it, the thing is that they they hold each other in, and that's really the challenge. There's really nothing underneath them uh, to hold them in. They're held in around the edge by the mechanism, but but the middle piece is just completely held in by the adjacent uh, small um, little pieces here. It's a very clever thing. Uh, these are kind of wedge shaped wedge shape piece and um, so if you got four of them uh, pressing on this little little square knob you see you got four of them pressing and because the wedges are slanted up and this one has a, a wedge that's slanted down it'll just it's like the the keystone in an arch it'll just it'll just sit there no problem but of course if there's if there's slack on this one and then maybe there's slack on another one. Now, you know, that end is not supported. So there has to be pressure from at least three of these, preferably four at all times. That's why I was so particular about getting these edges uh, tightened down so that the puzzle is as small as possible surface area so that all the pieces are pressing as much as possible on these, these little ones. I think it's fine. Really, it, it's a very clever, uh, clever design. Um, but, you know, like a lot of really clever things, um, you know the the manufacturer ability you know maybe wasn't uh, on <laughs> on the designer's mind and I'm glad because if he'd worried about how uh, much trouble it was going to be he might not have uh, designed it so I appreciate that so uh, what I've done here is I put this uh, one vertex uh, in the middle there that might pop out as we're going um, it's not really uh, going to be a problem and then these uh, little crescent pieces just go in there and they snap into place and uh, that's what I'll show you as well um, because these are, this is the lock Mac, that I'm using. This piece locks everything into place, and that's the one we're going to slip in um, last. And in fact, the last piece on the puzzle will be that we put in will be one of these. All right, these two little uh, leaf-like uh, uh, pieces. They uh, they just you put one down one side here, and then uh, one down the other side. And I'll do a close-up of this as well uh, at some point. So that you have those on either side. Now you can go ahead and put them um, in, in the rest of the three faces that we're putting in. They might fall out um, into the puzzle and that's that's okay you know. Um, just, just dig them out. Okay. Um, there we go. There we go. Okay. All right. And uh, yeah, so you know, it, it gives a little bit more stability, I think, to the uh, to the faces as we go along here. But it might be, um, yeah, well, kind of hard to say how it's going to go. Eh? Okay, so we're we're basically building up. Um, we're going to be building up this face and then I guess we're going to uh, go around this way. Now, hmm, we got to get started here, so this is a sort of a bit of a, a chicken and egg situation. I think I need to put um, another piece down here um, to get us started. And with that in mind, then I'm going to put one of these in down here, down at the bottom. So uh, now I guess we get to see how to put these in. Um, basically what I found 
is that these are these are easiest to put in when the when the edge is turned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this edge. Okay, and and well, this isn't going to be much of a challenge now. So this this slot actually just fits uh, behind. Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, move up a little closer here. Um, so so the little tab just goes in behind this piece and behind that piece, sort of underneath the edge. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're as we're going because right now you can see it, but in the future you you'll be putting that in pretty much without any. Um, without any um, being able to see where it's going. All right, well that's looking pretty uh, pretty solid now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to do this um, all around here. Um, some of these could slip out as we're working on the puzzle. That's okay. I just want them, you know, as many as possible. Now remember these these big vertices go in and then you have to turn them. And I know it seems like a really tight fit. Um, but that's okay. Once everything gets moving, it'll be fine. So you have to turn it so it's lined up more or less um, with the edge. Um, you know, the edges will. Eh, this this thing will get itself oriented because there'll be a lot of pressure uh, on it. Okay. So then we're gonna take uh, this and move this out of the way here. Okay. And then we just just move it back. Okay. Yeah. Um. I, I placed a lot of emphasis on um, making sure that all of the edges turn well because once no, I got a float plane taken off I'll just stop talking here Uh, there's an aerodrome on the lakefront right like two blocks from me <laughs> and uh, they take off they don't take off over my house they take off uh, parallel to the to the shoreline uh, kind of cool I, f I don't fly out of there in the summer very much but in the in the winter when there's ice and they use big tires okay so um, so that's what I, so I have these the big vertices and the crescent shapes all around the three faces that we're, we're putting in now technically you could go put all these in the rest of the puzzle but I think as you handle a puzzle they're not held in very well and as you turn things you might start falling out um, the big thing about this puzzle is stuff falling down and the only way I found to get it out once you start building it up is just hold all the loose pieces turn it upside down and and shake it um, so that's uh, that and that's where sometimes other pieces fall out and it just um, but I'm going to show you the method I use and uh, you know just uh, you know it, it, it maybe it requires a bit of a calm disposition but it's good for us I think to uh, focus on these things and uh, so intently kind of like doing a twisty puzzle isn't it so now I'll show you how to pick out the right pieces for this face. What I find really uh, helpful is to um, put them out. So you have your your diamond shaped piece. Okay, so so orient it so that it's the long way uh, down. And then you'll notice that the um, you notice that the bottom edge kind of slants downward, and this edge slants uh, downward. Right, so keep that in mind. And this this diamond piece sits right in the middle of this uh, of his face right here. So the little wedge that you you pick that goes there in the bottom left hand corner of the, the piece is going to have to have the top slope is going to have to match this. So I'll show you how I set out the five small face pieces before I actually assemble a face. And I set them out and I do this just so that they'll be there and so there's no fumbling uh, looking for parts while I have, uh, you know, two or three of the parts already installed. So these I'm calling the diamonds. This actually, um, once the puzzle's together, it looks more like a, a square. So here's a close-up view of this piece. Now it, it has a wide... Uh, dimension and a narrower dimension so I set it out with the wide dimension left and right so narrow is uh, up and down 
So that's the that's the diamond, and uh, you can see the profile where it has this sort of a wedge uh, profile to it. The little tiny top is what sticks out of the puzzle. So I start by setting that, which I'm calling a center, um, just off to the side of my working area, and then I start picking out these little. Uh, little uh, spear shaped pieces. There are only two of them. There's one and the part that actually sticks out of the puzzle is just the very top right there. The bottom, the base, uh, is under uh, the puzzle and it's the uh, the, the top of the, the face, the, the profile of the face, which I don't think I can actually get it, but you notice it's tilted down a little bit. That's what holds the, the um, center in. Now there are only two of these and uh, it, there's two orientations. There's one where the, the little uh, point is on the, the left, as in this case, and then the other one is uh, where the little where the little point. <laughs> see if we can get some focus. Uh, the other one where the little point um, is on the right. Okay. So there are only two of them, and uh, the way I do it is I just take them out of the the uh, bowl of uh, parts. And uh, if I get one with the uh, tip uh, uh, off to the, the bigger um, part to the left, then it's going to go either in the bottom uh, right because it matches the uh, slope of the, uh, the diamond or it goes on the top left. Those are both uh, the same shape. Okay, so the, the, the one with the, uh, the big part to the left goes either on the top left or the bottom right. Now if I have extras of them I just put them in a pile off to the side and I separate them by left and right and that way I can quickly grab a couple of them um, when I'm putting my next one together. So the other ones that, I, that you get where the, uh, the little big part is, is off to the right that goes um, in the top right and the bottom left. So having the um, pieces laid out like this, uh, I find it very helpful. I usually start by grabbing the bottom left uh, piece and putting it in uh, the face. Then I turn the edge, as I'll show you. And uh, then I grab uh, this uh, bottom uh, right piece, put it in. Grab the uh, top uh, right piece, put it in. Grab the center, put that in. And then grab the uh, top um, left piece and put that in. That's typically how I do it and um, assemble the face. So now that I have the pieces set out here, I'm going to put put them in this face right here. Now if we look at this face, we'll see that there's a big hole under there. So if I try and jam the pieces in, I drop one. Well, it's not so bad now because the puzzle's all open, but you can imagine as we make progress, the puzzle will be closed up, the piece will be in there. And um, if we had extra pieces, we wouldn't worry about it. A puzzle might rattle around like a maraca, but uh, at least it would be uh, okay. But most of the kits, uh, I happen to have extra pieces, but most of the kits don't. So we don't want the pieces falling in. That's the bottom line. So what I do is I'm going to put one piece in, and then I'm going to rotate this edge. And I'm going to rotate the edge, um, and you'll see how that works. Okay, so nothing's really been broken in here, so it's all pretty, pretty stiff. Um, so the idea then is to make sure that these these edges are all lined up, that these little leaves are pushed in. Okay, and um, so we want to get this little tiny piece in here. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the puzzle down um, so that so that it would tend to fall down and not into the puzzle and uh, I'm just going to set it kind of in that slot there and then all I all I really want to do is just is just rotate it um, and just gently press it into place I'm not really sure why oh okay I think it's okay I think what it is is that the, the this crescent shaped piece behind it might not be quite line up the way it needs to be okay there you go so all I did was I just I rotated this piece just a little bit and uh, and now it's now it's good now you'll notice that the slope it can be hard to see but this slope is continuous now and that's really important if you look at it and and th this piece changes direction the slope then you got the wrong piece in there and it, if you get one wrong um, 
that I guarantee you that middle's gonna fall out and you'll have another one wrong somewhere in your puzzle. So, all right, we got that. Whew. That was tricky, that was the first one. So now I'm gonna turn this edge very gently until, just until this part is, is fully over um, some solid um, core. So I'm gonna start turning this. Now remember this might might push out of place and that's okay. Um, we don't really care at this point until we get all three faces. <laughs> Alright, I'm just pushing it right out of the way. Okay, it shouldn't be this hard, so something's not quite right. Ah. So this edge is, is loosened up a little bit or moved. A little bit there we go all right so I'm pushing everything and okay so there we go so I have this um, this little nook is over top of the leaf now or sorry uh, the center here now normally you're gonna have other stuff over here to help you but this is the first one so this is gonna be a little trickier so now I go back to my pile of um, little centers and I take the bottom right one and I just kind of stuff it in there. Okay. And it's got to be up high. It can't be underneath. And so um, when it's correct, I'm just going to move this back just a little wee bit. Okay. You'll see it, that when it's correct, it'll slide right in there. Okay. You can push it just gently. Don't use a lot of force. There you go. Okay. So you see... Now it's shoved all the way in, and notice the slope of this is all the same. If if this um, if the slope of this is wrong and it's pointing in the wrong direction, you'll see it change direction. So that's the bottom right corner of the of the um, of the diamond, the, the center, and this is the upper right corner, which goes just above it. And uh, all we're trying to do here is just get it to rest. Um, Oops. Sorry, I just, I'm, uh, whoa, because I would, I would normally uh, be a little closer to it. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble seeing the pieces. I'm sure you can understand. Uh, okay, so, so this, there's nothing on top of it yet. So all we want to do is just, just get it so it's nestled right up against this. And so that there's, and so that there's a little kind of a diamond shaped uh, hole right there. You see that little diamond shaped hole? Okay. And now we get our diamond shape and we can shove it in there. Okay. And you can, what, basically what you can do is rest it against here and just slide it into place. Okay. Now you got to make sure that it's, it's well in there and that it's up. Okay. If the surface of this is below the surface of these adjacent pieces, it's going to fall out. It might seem like it's good, but it means it's not being locked into place by that wedge mechanism. All right. So we're almost done. Remember, we've already put the bottom right one in. We don't need that. We just need the upper left one. So we're going to put the upper left one in. But I might have to, I'm just, I'm going to try and get this in, but I, I might have to deviate a bit here just because... I got nothing supporting the left hand side of this. Oh, okay, I got it. So there you go. So we have these pieces in and we notice that everything's flush and everything's good, right? Now, the next thing to do is we gotta lock these into place and we lock those into place with um, one of these uh, one of these sort of crescent shaped pieces. Now, I, I normally actually put them in the other way, but in this with this first one, um, we can go this way. Now, because these pieces are just so sitting there so loosely, whoop, okay, I just, notice I just moved that, and then two pieces just kind of fell, slipped out of place. Actually, yeah, uh, one piece just slipped out of place. Okay, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my, uh, uh, my process just a little bit here, because I just... This little piece is just going to go flying. And uh, you see, we just, this little wedge just kind of came, it, it's turned around, whoop, the little center. So, yeah, so it's in a pretty fragile state right now. So I'm just going to very, very carefully slide uh, this crescent in behind those pieces, and that'll give it a little bit more 
uh, support. You know, right now this is the worst case scenario where there's literally nothing holding those in but but gravity. Okay, and um, okay, so that's better. Alright, so now I have something uh, to push against and to kind of hold this other piece in. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's try putting the piece in correct here. <laughs> I had it turned around. It's it's really hard to, hard to see. Whoa, hard to see. Okay, it'll be fine. There we go. Alright, so... I have the three pieces in that I need um, and before I turn anything I want to make sure that these are all flush because if this one's sunken in it's just going to fall out on you and it's going to be really hard uh, to get it back. So now I'm going to press on this side to hold these pieces wedged in and I'm going to very very slowly um, I turn this center back. very very slowly now if you see a gap opening up stop because that gap means that they're not being supported once we get all three pieces done um, in this cluster then they'll all be pushing on each other and that's how they're all held in okay we just got a little bit further to go here and there we go okay um, that was probably the hardest one on the whole puzzle, but there you go. That's the first face uh, put in. These next ones, um, because there's going to be something uh, pushing on them, going to be a lot, lot easier. Okay. Now, um, we don't want to move this this face, if possible. Okay, so I'm going to move this edge that way which means that my next piece is going to go down here. So I'm just going to get uh, set right up again, as I usually do. Sort of back out here and see my my pieces that I have. You know, give yourself a moment to check that you have all of these oriented correctly, these little pieces, because getting it wrong, you got to take that face apart, and sometimes the other ones crumble, and it just, uh, it's all tears. It's really very, a very sad thing, so... So what I've done is I've just I pushed this um, large ver vertex up to be lined up with the edges. I'm making sure that both edges are lined up now. Now that we got everything, I'm going to push these leaves in a little bit. Okay, this this vertex is now in its proper place. So basically, we're in much better shape now than when we started on this other one. Now at one point, at some point, we're going to have to turn an edge with with other pieces in it, but I think we'll be okay. Um, once we get a couple of pieces in. So the process now for this is the same as the other one, but it's gonna be a lot easier. We just sort of hang the piece in, piece from the edge. And you know, if it does fall in the hole, you just just tip the whole puzzle over and, uh, and, and tap it out. Um, you know, I thought of maybe putting something in the core um, because those openings, everything below the, the, the turning surface that you see um, is, is not use space um, so I've been you know I was thinking of trying to maybe put some some expanding foam in there or some clay or you know something to keep to provide a place for the pieces to land but you know I think this process I'm using is, is is quite reasonable and you know once you put the puzzle together you don't really need to you know I don't really care what it's like in there Great design. I just, you know, I'm just in awe of this. And like you say, if uh, you know, if designers were really worried about this part of it, then they they might not take their chances. So now I'm turning the rest of this uh, this way. I gotta be make sure that this this uh, adjacent face the pieces don't turn. And I'm just going to turn it just until um, this part uh, gets over some solid uh, solid ground there, so to speak. 
Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to fix up these adjacent faces just to make sure everything's good. All right, well, um, now we have the drill, and uh, now it's just going to get easier and easier. I'm going to put it in the bottom right here. And you see I dropped it, but that's okay because I can just kind of um, pull it with my little uh, um, bead working. These are beads, it's, and, and they... You, oh, you can't see them on uh, camera. Sorry about that. These are um, bead, um, I don't know, tweezers. I got them at a dollar store uh, here in Canada. Dollar store, loony store, I guess. Um, didn't cost that much. Cost a dollar. I don't even think they charge a tax on it because it's, uh, I guess, bead working maybe is considered a not taxable. Well, I'm not really sure. And, um, or maybe they did charge me tax on it. Okay, so I got that in. Okay, it's um, you know don't don't accept the kind of a dodgy placement because if it's if it's just if it's not in in place, then you can't see for sure that it's locked in there. Okay, and if it's not locked in there, what's going to happen is that when you turn the face back, it's all going to fall back into the hole. All right. Okay, well, it seems, yeah, okay, it seems correct. I just pushed it in until I was sure that it's, it's flushed in there. Okay, so then, uh, you know, there's a couple ways to go. Um, the last time, I think I, I put the, the diamond in uh, first, the center. Uh, I'm, I mean, second, I'm going to put that in. And then the upper right, I like to do that one. And this one's pretty much the way all of the rest of them are going to go. Whoa. Yeah, I'm... Uh, <laughs> I had my problems this morning. I, I would normally take my glasses off to do this, but I'm just a little bit further than, than what I can see. Kind of weird, eh? You wear glasses and then you got to take them off for... Okay, so what I've done is I've pulled up a little bit on this to get it to, to lock into these pieces. Because if this is sunken, it'll just fall out. Okay, and this is the, um, this will be the uh, upper left one. And this is, this is pretty easy because basically if you just, now that we have that in place, you just have to lay it in there and just kind of slide it along. Now, you'll notice that the, see the center wedge? Uh, the center whoop, has uh, slipped down in and that is what causes so much difficulty assembling this puzzle because if you don't notice that that's happened then basically the center just falls it falls out when you turn it so you got to make sure it's pulled up here really well and it's being held so there so now I've squeezed those together as much as I can but what's really going to help us here is putting in the crescent on the top. <clears throat> now, this is the way I do the crescent. Always uh, make sure everything. So, um, I put one tab in this crack right here, and then I put the other tab sort of in that crack right there. Okay, so basically, if there wasn't enough room for the piece, what I would do is I would just kind of um, pry a little opening in there, because you'll see the last one does get kind of tight. Um, but this one looks good and then I kind of tip it in and then I push the tab down in and then I slide it under. Okay, so now we, we got this side's good. Now, what sometimes, um, if there's not a lot of room, this piece especially um, will kind of be under the tab. So I can just very gently, very gently kind of kind of push it, push it down, push down on the piece. And now this tab, I want to get it underneath um, this edge here so I don't want to I don't want to turn that edge um, normally I would maybe just turn things just just a little more but um, in this case because I got so much slack I'm just gonna go ahead and basically what I'm doing is I'm I'm prying um, this piece in that way and this piece just out just a little wee bit Oop. Okay, that shouldn't really be, 
going away like that. Actually, because because we still don't have pieces on the other side, I guess I could, could get away with doing it this way. Uh, okay, not quite sure why that's gone like that. Okay, and now I can lock that in. Now, I got that in. Um, didn't have to snap anything that time. Everything looks lined up. That still all looks lined up. So now I'm going to very, very carefully uh, push all of this, this back. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm pushing way up here. And I'm keeping my, my, uh, my thumb on this side to keep all these pieces squeezed together. And now um, I just, I notice this is starting to, I hadn't noticed that that part drooped a little bit. So uh, I'm just, yipes. I think it'll be okay, but wow. Um, yeah, I didn't, I hadn't noticed that that part was not in place. There we go. It shows you, eh, this puzzle, is, there's a lot to it. All right, well, that's, uh, okay. So that's all squeezed together. That's good. You know, if one of these was loose, like if that center was drooped now, I'd just poke it in and just start start that process over. There's not really much else you can do. All right, now the third face and uh, is going to get easier. And now it's going to get easier. Now that we have that first uh, three done where there's nothing supporting the sides, it'll get easier because we'll just spiral around and, and, and do them that way. So uh, time to do time to do this one right here. Right on, man. This is great. Now this first one's obviously <laughs> taking a little longer, and I'm I'm doing a lot of explanation. It really is fun to to put it together. You know, I, I have all these dire warnings and whatever. It's just because uh, you know you sort of learn things the hard way, and uh, you know I I sort of want to share it with people. <laughs> um, but I really encourage everyone to put this puzzle together. I don't think it takes any special, uh, any special skill, other than um, patience and uh, you know determination. Because you got to really stick with this. Whoop. All right, so we're gonna put those last ones in, and uh, I have my my pieces laid out here. Um, I don't know if I can see it in a wide shot. So I have my pieces ready to go. Okay, always do it that way. I always. You know, very consistent that way. All right, so just pick up the bottom, uh, the bottom left, and put it in there. I'm gonna make sure this everything's tight here. And we just kind of, so I've tilted the, uh, tilted the puzzle and. Oops, uh, whoa, sort of like the, that, uh, you know, the Olympic athlete that does, uh, it, you know, always is, uh, uh, is a really good form, and then they go to the Olympics, and then they fall apart, it's, I sort of feel like that, like I, you know, I, I do goof the occasional one of those, but not, not 17 times in a row, um, but, you know, there you go, let's see, whoa, Actually, aren't you supposed to get better with the observer effect or the Hawthorne effect or something like that? You're supposed to get better if someone's watching it. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm just naturally bad at this. Okay, so that one that one slipped in pretty pretty well. Let's see how that looks. Still hanging out a little bit. Okay, now I'm not pushing on the top part. I'm pushing on the, the, the shoe the um the bigger part the the base the shoe <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh and it just <laughs> just popped out so what do I do well I just turn the puzzle upside down and I tap it until the piece falls out there you go normally it falls out the hole now if as as you're assembling the puzzle and you have more and more pieces in it, you might have to take out a leaf to get the piece to fall out so, well, you got to see what happens when it's not quite seated properly. And that's what I'm 
kind of that's why I'm emphasizing getting these pieces in um, firmly even though it looks like they're in you got to make sure that they're that they're actually the little tab on the bottom of it I was calling it a shoe earlier let's uh, let's just kind of uh, since I'm since I'm goofing this up anyway give myself a little a little uh, rest here so so see that that bottom that big bottom part I'm calling that the shoe but I guess that's the base isn't it I mean, it looks like a shoe, doesn't it? So that has to go underneath um, the adjacent pieces. And if it's sitting out even a little bit, that tells me that, it's, that that tab isn't under there. And I think I demonstrated that pretty convincingly um, by, just, by just tapping on it and it just popped right out. So basically it wasn't actually under there. Okay. So... Yeah. Well, I'll try one more time and then what I'll do is I'll just get another one of those center pieces again you know if a piece doesn't fit really well in this puzzle because of the sort of the tolerances of the individual pieces and the um, you know the individual um, you know the local pieces you know you can change the one piece for another and, and things will go better and then that other piece will um, then that other piece will fit properly someplace else, or maybe it's a placebo effect. Maybe just changing the pieces piece makes you feel um, that you're uh, that, that you're doing better or something. I don't know. Okay, what I did there was I just I turned this little bit just a little little amount, and that I think, and that now it's it's smooth there. All right, I'm being really fussy about this because I just don't like putting. Um, you know, a whole whack of pieces in <clears throat> and then turning it back and have it all fall into the center. Very demoralizing, you know. So uh, we have the uh, two of the three faces in and what's left is to put in this third face. Now, I need to figure out where where I'm going to turn this. And I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn this face this way off to the left because then this this area will be above here which means I have to put in that piece. So I'm just gonna set out all of my pieces as usual, and we'll get that one done. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what if I just try and put the pieces in just without uh, turning that face? And my answer is, um, <laughs> how are you gonna get the um, that, that center face piece to stay put when you only have two pieces holding it in right and then you have to put the third the fourth piece or the third piece up top and then that piece and then put that crescent in and as you're pushing the crescent in what's holding those pieces in well the answer is nothing <laughs> when you turn it what's holding it in is is the the base of the uh of the edge you know mechanism Now we turn it just only as far as we need to. I'm actually going to turn it back just just a little wee bit there. That is just as far as it needs to go. We don't we don't really need to go any further. Actually, I think we just need to go just a little further, and it's to put that that crescent in later. Okay, so just this one that that's lined up. Okay, this will this will work, and we'll be able to get this one in. So I'm going to put this bottom right piece in and uh, okay hmm. well ah, that one actually went went really well <laughs> all right and this one up top here I don't want to push on the upper part I'm pushing on the little foot part there we go not in as far as it, it seems that it should go but well just go with that I guess okay so I just I push down on this part a little bit 
just to make a bit more room because we're going to need a lot more room anyway once that crescent gets in there. The reason I like using that crescent um, as the last piece is because it, because of its shape, it will actually push um, you know the other pieces aside gently. This little uh, heel normally just goes right under there. I mean, really, we don't have room. Once I get that crescent in there, it'll it'll make room. But uh, hmm. yeah, normally. I slid that uh, little wedge into place and now now that center is being held and you see that, that there is quite a bit of room here all right um, so I'm gonna grab one of the crescents and this is really the kind of the the trick here right is to kind of tip this in and get one end in without pushing any of those pieces out of place okay so I've just pushed one end of the tab under and now I'm just going to push it in and now on this other side I'm just going to pry just a little bit not on these little pieces but on the big beefy edge piece and basically this tab actually goes in that gap there but because of the way it's turned actually sorry it, it'll it'll slide into the gap and then under um, but right now I'm just I'm just going to try and and just kind of convince it to go go straight down and then I'm going to push straight on the tab make sure that nothing's caught here and uh, I'm just going to pry these two pieces apart a little bit and you can hear it snap into place and then and this is the important part you got to make sure that that tab is latched by shoving it down that way because if it hasn't latched then it's just pressing against that and uh, now make sure that those are good make sure that those are good and um, make sure nothing else came out of place. And now we can see if we just uh, just rotate this back, very and relatively safely. You got to be kind of gentle because of you know the, the mechanism is not entirely done. But now that the, all those face pieces are in, you now that edge should turn quite quite properly. And there you go, <laughs> your first three faces um, all nicely put in, and it gets easier from here on out. So uh, time to uh, move on. Uh, we have the first three phases done, which is uh, quite an accomplishment. That's probably, probably I think, the hardest part. And uh, now we want to go in and fill in um, the rest of the phases. And I'm just going to wind my way around the puzzle. So I'm just going to go ahead and work on this, and I'll show you a few of them. I don't think it's necessary to show, show you the whole thing. Uh, once I get those done, uh, we'll just skip right to the very end and uh, finish it off. And then we'll, we'll talk about uh, breaking in and uh, stuff like that. All right, here we go. So I'm just gonna very carefully put these pieces in here. Now, when when you're snapping something in, you gotta watch that that it doesn't suddenly uh, move um, a bunch of uh, a piece of the face uh, on you. So you know, it's just just be careful. That's all I'm saying. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it in from this side here to to minimize that risk. Okay, and that, did, that just snapped in. Now, if I had to, I would have pried a little bit between those just to kind of make a little room. Um, there is some flexibility in the mechanism here. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do, um, because there's there's no face pieces on this edge right here, I'm just going to turn it, and this will turn away. And what it'll do is it'll put this side of, away, and then I can put that crescent in quite, quite easily. So I'm just going to very carefully turn this ever so carefully. And now I can just get that in. There we go. And now I can just turn it back. Okay, and so I just turned it back. There we go. So that one's all uh, nice and uh, and snug in there. And now I can I can fill in this part. And I think that yeah, I can sort of see how this is gonna go. Where I'll fill in uh, that one, maybe that one, and then over here, and then that one and, and basically I'll be completing um, as many faces as possible um, 
you know, working on, on finishing a feast that's already started from the layer below or something. Okay, so I have my uh, my centers laid out. I'm going to pick up the uh, bottom left one. Okay, so this, this part isn't quite lined up properly. So I just got to very, very carefully uh, this this part isn't quite lined up and I think that's okay it's a very subtle thing but huh. yeah, I'm just having some trouble with uh, getting that one piece to pop in there and again I don't want to do anything until I have the piece in place okay okay I think I see what the problem might be okay there we go okay so I pushed this this little crescent was was pushed up a little bit now you see how careful I'm being to make sure that these little pieces are in place and that's because you know it they can sort of seem like they're in and you do a lot of work to get the rest of the the, the ones in place and then you know you just you turn the, the face and then it just all crumbles okay and yes so now it's it's actually slipped into place and uh, now it's it's actually Okay, now it, it's definitely in there. Okay, so I'm going to turn this edge up until this part just goes over the, the, the pivot point there. Okay. I'm just going to turn that a little bit to make it easier to move. There we go. Okay. There we are. So now I can go ahead and uh, put the piece, the rest of the pieces in. Okay, and this is going to be another one of those oddball ones where there's nothing to the left, um, but I'm getting used to that. I'm going to take my, I'm take my glasses off. Sort of a paradox that I don't really see that, but <laughs> um, okay. So that one, yeah, that one slipped in quite nicely. Quickly. We don't need the bottom because we have it, uh, but we're going to need the upper uh, left piece. But I'm going to put the, the little crescent in first uh, because of the uh, because there's nothing to the side here, and that that new piece would be just floating on nothing. Okay, so I'm just going to push that in. That shouldn't that shouldn't be very difficult. Okay, now if something snaps or clicks, those pieces could fall out. And, you know, it's just kind of part of the game. You know. Okay, that'll help. Hmm. Yep. There we go. Okay, so that's all nice and tight in there, and now we'll get the, the last one. Okay, there we go. And I'm making sure that the, the, uh, the diamond is up here and locked into place. And now we're going to kind of push all this back without letting the pieces kind of separate. And that could be it's, that's our challenge but <laughs> okay I think we saw what just happened here not not really cool but that's that's what you know the, the issue of getting getting these faces started here without anything beside them so 
I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's a better uh, a routine for them. <laughs> okay, well that's definitely looking good. Okay, now as you're pushing on all of these, um, remember not to push on these little tiny uh, center pieces. They're just, they're just not going to take much <laughs> pushing at this point. But there we go. That's a face number four, right? There's 30 faces, so every time we we do one, we we get uh, that much further further ahead. So. We're back and down to the last five faces on the edge turning rhombic triaconthahedron assembly. I have all the other uh, faces assembled and it's all done the same way as I've been showing it. And uh, now, um, as we've seen maybe in some of the other faces, it is starting, it, parts are starting to get quite tight uh, to put in there. So um, that's something I gotta be you know, aware of. I will probably end right here so uh, so I'm going to put these four outer ones in and uh, there should be enough uh, free uh, enough space anyway to get all those in without too much trouble. This last one we just might have to uh, do a bit of prying and, and prodding to get it to uh, to go together. So we're, we're putting in um, these pieces here. I'm going to zoom in for this one so we can kind of get a, a good uh, up close uh, one of these last ones. So we'll just we'll move this edge that way, which means I have to put in this one bottom left, which is the one I always use. Uh, it can be done the other way, I'm sure, but this just is the, the way I like to the way I like to do it. Getting pretty pretty good with putting this piece in. It, it falls in every once in a while, but so far not not too too many problems and. It has to go in flush, remember, all the way, and it, now things are starting to straight out, straighten out. Okay, but some of the earlier ones we'd have to go in and maybe uh, twist this a little bit, turn that one down a bit, uh, push this one in, straighten this edge, whatever we need to do. Okay, so I'm moving this edge and this leaf up just until this notch is just over the the center, and uh, we'll just I'll just keep this this part out of the way with my thumb, the vertex. Okay, so okay, there we go. Okay. And uh, actually, that vertex has to pretty much have it um, where it, it needs to be right now. So I'm going to put the bottom um, right in there now. Now this part is is both easier and harder. The pieces are staying in quite nicely because everything's tighter, um, and including in here when I'm assembling the. The face, but I'm, I am finding it a little more difficult, like getting the pieces, oops, to slide under the other pieces, getting these little tabs or whatever. There's probably a technical name for these these things. I should probably learn it. Um, I've been calling them feet and tabs and <laughs> uh, boot, everything. Anyway, it's the it's the anchor. <laughs> it's the bottom of the piece. It's the big the big uh, pad that the piece sits on that helps it slide around. Anyway, whatever that thing's called, it has been, been getting a little, sometimes it's a little tight to slide it under there when the pieces are new. Um, but that tells me that, that everything's nice and tight in there. And that's what that's what we signed up for when I torque tor tor down those fasteners as tight as they would go and then just back off until the pieces that needed to move moved. So I have my three pieces in there now. I'll take my um, take the crescent and just kind of shove it in there. Now this vertex is really not where it belongs, but uh, I'm going to fix that. So, but first I have to make a little bit of room for this tab here. Whoa.
Hmm. Yeah, so this this vertex has to go up. I just oh, yeah, I wanted to do that carefully, but anyway, I guess just whatever. Okay. So that's all all done, and now I'm gonna put the uh, this third piece right here, and remember that the fourth piece is waiting for us over on the other side. So these are all nicely in there. And now I just have to kind of coax this this whole assembly to kind of turn. And while I'm doing that, I'm pushing with my thumb on this and and we'll end up putting this into the right position. Just kind of just just the way all this uh as all this goes in. Okay, there we go, and now I'm just going to turn this this vertex until everything's lined up. There we go. Okay. So you'll see that these aren't entirely lined up, and that's okay at this at this stage. Um, what I'll do is, is as I'm um, as I'm doing the uh, a break in, I'll go around and make sure that those are. Um, correctly lined up before I start turning anything. Okay, that might be just, just a little better, but um, yeah, it's just it's this one here that has to turn, and you just basically turn the two adjacent ones until they kind of wiggle back and forth and find their their proper proper position. They, these ones are perfect. You can see they're the perfect arc. These ones are a little, uh, a little rougher. So last piece, we know that the last piece we put in is going to be the crescent, which will have to go there. We don't have any room now, um, so it's going to be a bit of prying, but it'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. It's going to work great. So I'm just, as we always do, setting out my. Um, my pieces here. There we are, and nothing changes from our process, except for at the very, very end, there'll just be a bit more pushing and, and shoving. All right, put that one piece in. Now you see we don't have a whole lot of lot of room there. If you did have problems getting that piece in, like just just fitting the tips of your fingers in there. Um, you could always leave that leaf out until you get that in, but you have to remember to put the leaf in once uh, There we go once uh, that piece is in Okay, so we're done there And now time to turn this this will be the last one we do And because it's the last piece, it's very important that um, that we have access um, to this seam right here. And uh, so we, I turned it maybe a little further than I normally would. And I'm going to push in both directions to try and open this cavity as much as I possibly can. There we go. All right, so it's opened up. Bottom left, bottom right. <laughs> Top right. Center. Getting pretty crowded in there. Upper left, last of these little leaf-like pieces. You know, yeah, there you go. We got through it, right? Um, oops. You know, you look at a big pile of those, and when you're first getting started, all right. 
it's it's fighting it's it doesn't want to go <laughs> um you know you, you first get started and there's a big pile of those and but here we are yeah. okay okay so i just pushed on a little pad underneath it am i calling it a pad now called it a boot a foot a <laughs> tab pad Someone will tell me, hopefully, in the comments what that's actually called. Well, so this is the piece we got to put in there. And this is the hole we have. Not a lot of room, is it? So basically we're gonna we're gonna push the edge of this down and we're gonna spread both halves of these apart. I'm gonna snap in one end and we're gonna Snap in the other end. Ow. Now, if that other end won't go, let's just take a small screwdriver and just coax it. Okay, but it's very flexible, so it'll be okay. Okay, so if you have to, you can just Try that center. Okay. And we almost have it in there. Okay, so just a matter of uh next this is the wrong one. I'm just going to open that up a little bit. There we go. And just basically got to push that little tab down and to one side or the other. Okay, and that's how it's done. You basically just put it in with the edge down and just just get one tab in and then the other one it helps if if you're lined up on a on a sort of a, uh, a seam so there is the romic triacon tahedron all finished and the next thing we'll be doing is breaking so the edge turning rhombic triacon tahedron is assembled it looks great and uh, now we have a uh, case where we need to break in uh, the puzzle is this one is uh, particularly uh, challenging uh, because there's not a lot of, you don't have a lot of leverage um, on uh, the bases uh, to start them off uh, and there's a lot of friction um, going around these circles so I've come up with a, a way that uh, seems to work reasonably well and basically what I do is I, I put uh, one thumb on the, the narrow uh, part of the edge here and uh, my other thumb on the, the thick, uh, the vertex, and I just rock them back and forth, and at first the, the movement will be barely perceptible, but you just rock them back and forth, and you can see that they slowly start to move, and just make them wider and wider arcs. got to put a fair bit of force on it now as you're doing this you want to make sure that that the uh, inner um, face pieces are in a nice arc a nice line um, if they aren't then uh, you know you want to you might want to go in and do another uh, face first where things are in a line okay but anyway you just rock it back and forth like that 
and you just get it to move in any way you can because after a little bit of this something magical happens which is that it starts to move and you can get it to go around in one full circle and you want to reverse that and get it around in another full circle okay. and now what I do is I'm going to grip it because there's not a lot, you can't put a lot of force, a lot of torque on it so I'm going to grip it with this hand and I'm going to use the diameter of the puzzle and I'm basically just just gripping it this way and so I have the, the full diameter of the puzzle to be able to put some torque on it this is what I'm doing here okay and now after all that work and effort um, the piece you know the face it turns it's not great yet um, it turns but keep in mind that uh, that this uh, piece that we've just broken in incorporates sections of one two three four other faces so if we break this one in a little bit and then we break all the other four in then that one gets broken in um, even more but it actually turns and you get you know you can you could play with the puzzle at this point uh, with it, if it was just had this one face so that's how it's done. Uh, there are 60 of those to do. So uh, you want to find an efficient method. Now, any uh, where these little edge pieces are just slightly askew, um, just uh, work work the the um, adjacent ones until you get it. You, you want to be uh, be careful. You don't try and turn it when they're they're not quite lined up. The other thing to be careful of is is only push on the edge that's anchored in the vertex. And you know the big pedal things do definitely don't push in the middle here. You don't want to push anything in. It should be okay, but I just you know you just don't want to stress your puzzle any more than necessary. So that's it for the um, breaking in of the edge turning rhombic tricon tahedron. Basically, I have a lot of work ahead of me. I'm going to be uh, doing this. Uh, probably take me an hour to get all the faces to to turn. Um, uh, just to turn reasonably, and then. Then it's just going to be some some turning of the uh, of the pieces uh, until uh, until I get everything uh, loosened up uh, and and working smoothly. But eventually it will work very very smoothly, and there's no, no there's no question about that. It, I know it seems kind of daunting right now, but eventually this is going to be turning just um, as good as any uh, commercial puzzle, um, maybe even better. Um, because of the, the nature of the mechanism and because of the nature of the shapeways material. So I'm going to just work on this. And um, so, you know, it's really hard to do any kind of follow-up because uh, it's, it's probably going to be a few weeks before I get my uh, my stickering. Uh, probably be a week before I get all these faces turning really smoothly. So I think what I'll do is I'll just plan a, a yet another follow-up of, of this uh, after I get everything stickered. Now, you know, talking about stickers, uh, I got my two sets of stickers from uh, Oliver, and um, I'm just going to go ahead, once I'm confident that everything is uh, uh, in order here, and I have the break-in done, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sticker it. Now, I'm, I'm one that, that likes to do a very long break-in before I sticker things, um, because I, I think that, that this break-in process, especially on a puzzle like this, uh, you know, it's, it's rough on the stickers, right? You're going to be beating up on, a, on the stickers quite a bit. Um, so uh, I'm going to wait until everything's good and it also gives me a chance to think about algorithms and even to test out little algorithms um, you know on the, on the unstickered puzzle so you know the effects of uh, messing it up won't be so um, so extreme uh, as if it was a, a sticker well <laughs> if I mess something up with a sticker it's too bad because there's no disassembling this is there to get it back um, no, nah, it just wouldn't be practical. So, um, now, getting the stickers to stick is, I think, a topic for another discussion, um, another video. Um, I always use, uh, on Shapeways, I like to use a hairdryer, um, to make the bigger stickers stay on there. I put them on, and then I use a hairdryer and heat them up and then press them down. 
but uh, on the smallest pieces that doesn't work they fall off so I will be using some uh, um, some uh, super glue uh, in some way on the smallest stickers now um, I know Tony has a video of how to you put stickers on with that with that method using a needle I guess or a, I use a paper clip um, the, uh, the thing about shapeways is it absorbs super glue if it put it right on the surface so you had it have to put quite a bit on there um, to get it uh, to finally get a kind of a flat surface for the sticker um, I've in the past I've put the um, super glue on the back of the sticker and um, just just sort of in the middle and some dots not quite at the edge but just inside the edge because you have to remember that when you press it it'll squeeze out uh, so I, I'm gonna probably do something like that uh, to try there are a lot of stickers so I need to find a an efficient and workable um, method for this so it's just but it's just something to kind of have fun thinking about while I'm going through this uh, rigorous process of uh, of um, breaking in the, uh, the the edges here this is going to be well worth it it's just from looks alone it's going to be well worth all of the effort and you know I had fun putting this thing together you know it's a it's a kind of an interesting thing to do so um, yeah that's my uh, that's my edge turning rhombic trichontahedron not too many of these in the world right now uh, maybe somebody will mass produce it someday that would be kind of cool well, that's it for the um, edge turning rhombic triacontahedron assembly and break in. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, I, I encourage you, I welcome you to, uh, to leave some uh, feedback on this video. And uh, I will come back after I get it uh, thoroughly broken in and stickered, and I'll come back with a, uh, yet another follow up video. In the meantime, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.